Hello, everybody. We're back getting ready for our second series of the day. I'm right on cloud nine because Rose Thorne has acknowledged my artistic expression skills. And uh, I'm getting excited for this next match because we got a civil war in front of us, gentlemen. Team Liquid, both of their rosters going up against each other. Challengers versus first. And uh, this is a lot of talent under one umbrella developing under the Team Liquid squad. But uh, I think that we can safely say that one of these teams should be a little favored going into this match, Desirex. I don't know, but <laughs> Team Liquid challenges are looking pretty fierce. Yeah, more than a little, Steve. I mean, uh, a lot of the members that we have on Team Liquid first, like uh, Surdy and City Witty, were part of the tryouts to get onto this Team Liquid yes. Challengers roster. So uh, it, it's still development nonetheless. This is still some uh, two rosters are looking to try and develop and make even better. But uh, once you get into the Civil War territory, that's when it's like, uh, it feels kind of bad, man, because not, you know, it's just in a different room, they could be talking all that trash and flexing mm -hmm. on you. It's fun because of the direct correlation between some of the roles. Like you said, some of these players were trying out for the same roles uh and now they get to phase off against each other and this is a big opportunity potentially to be like hey if i do better than you you know hey yeah. team liquid steve <laughs> 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 making some arguments let's take a look at some of the rosters here starting with team liquid honda first beat that when we look at this roster i think that again the top half of the map like deserts had highlighted is often where our eyes go because players like surdy have had this experience this kind of legacy developing in the semi-pro scene here in North America. Yeah, and in previous interviews with Surdy talking about how he's trying to be a better teammate, use that experience and skill that he's gained over this time to better the team around him, I think is something to be on the lookout for as well. City Witty was one of the most exciting junglers to come out of semi-pro last year, and I think it's great that he ends up getting picked up for an affiliate team. So I, I'm really excited about this top half of the map. I always thought Aspect was good, whether it was semi-pro or I believe at the time it was called Academy, he was playing at that level here. So I think overall this team is a very similar in a way to what we say about FlyQuest challengers is that look i like the pieces we're seeing individually but together the teamwork is what they still got to work on there, there's I, oh go for it that's oh crazy. yeah there, there, there's so much potential in this roster but potential that's looking to be realized right now like evil geniuses had surdy last year <laughs> uh moving on into the next year he, he's looking to uh, as you said beat like improve that consistency uh get past a lot of the criticisms that were held onto him and step up yeah. more into that leadership role uh, it, it's just a shame that their season is not going exactly the way they want, but they do have their plan set onto how they want to at least function as a squad. Yeah, they're getting more of an identity as yeah. the season's gone on. This is, again, Team Liquid first of multiple players that are competing at this level for the first time. Players like uh, Mia in the bot lane. Uh, I think is getting more experience with Rovex. I saw last week a couple of plays where it's like, first couple of weeks, it definitely felt like they were just getting to know each other. But last week, it's starting to come together. I'm hoping that this week it continues because they have a tough bot lane to go up against. Arrow versus Kim down. And honestly, everybody at Team Liquid on the Challengers is pretty scary. They are one of the teams currently in the top of the standings and kind of expectations for them is that they will be punching towards that number one spot by the end of the split. Uh, Steve, I got to ask, did you see yesterday's game with Team Liquid oh, Challengers? Oh, wow. Um, I saw the APA defense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were down triple inhibs. That's and insane. they defended that, team fought it, and just outright took the back door. I mean, this squad... It, it, it's incredible the amount of talent that they have coming from a whole different area of places, but it's incredible how well they're working together, especially in a macro sense, to make plays like that happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we get those plays because this team, very different from Team Liquid first, which makes sense. That's the provisional team for Team Liquid. They're developing a lot of newer players. This team is full of players that have a decent amount of experience. Bradley now into his second year in the top lane competing at this level. APA is probably the newest member, but has also competed at high levels of competition uh, in amateur and collegiate and has found a lot of success against his peers there. And like Arrow has been playing League of Legends for freaking ever, man. Like <laughs> this guy's been around the scene, has played LCS and is in this kind of conversation of, you know, the, the veteran helping out players like APA Bradley continue to develop. 
I think too, like you think about what this org has been able to do at this level for the last couple of years. I mean, we talk about Coach Spawn pretty often and how well he's done developing players, how good Team Liquid looked last year, winning back-to-back -back proving grounds and everything across the board here and it's starting to show with how well team liquid challengers have been looking on top of the gate as well just because i mean this is a pretty new ish team when you talk about even though there's some experience at this level the fact that it's the first time a lot of these players are playing together and looking this good is impressive and it kind of feels like if we're setting accurate expectations Team Liquid Challenger should be favorites going into this one. I don't think that it's unfair to say that and to just acknowledge that. If Team Liquid first get a win here, it is massive for them and their confidence because currently they have two game wins overall in the split. This really is top versus bottom of the standings. I mean, it, it's a little exciting because it's two teams under the same uh, org umbrella, but it's an eight and two team versus a two and eight team. So even one game win for Team Liquid first feels great. And it, when we look at how they found wins in the past, I think that it's got to be around getting Rovex on something that can get around the map and City Witty on a farming jungler. They went to Karthus jungle with Rovex on a pike earlier. And that's actually how they got uh, one of their two wins. And I was like, that was so cool to me because it signaled that they have a style that works for them. And I know working against Team Liquid Challenger, we'll see, but I want to see that version of Team Liquid first here, Deserix. I want to see them go for something that isn't necessarily standard because that hasn't been working for them. I mean, B, this is where we start talking about Taco Gaming when you have discussions about City Witty and Rovex pulling out those pocket picks. They've pulled out some great stuff in the past and it has worked well for them, but it's also had some blunders for them. I've noticed Rovex kind of seems overconfident sometimes when he is on the pike and can sometimes over assert into plays where he's caught out all by himself. It's about tempering a lot of those plays and getting them to be all on the same page so they can be effective. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, really. Like, Team Liquid first, even though, I mean, TLC, probably one of the best teams in the league at the moment here. We look at TLF and that they have a lot of potential as well. It's just time that they need to work together. Yeah. And we're starting to see glimpses of it because they were one of a couple teams that were stuck at one win only, and they started to really find their stride, especially last week with the Karthus, with the Pike, kind of leaning into their specialties there. Even though they didn't win any games yesterday, they also mm -hmm. dug into a similar point there with City Witty once again on the Karthus. I think you gotta have confidence coming into this one. I hope that Team Liquid Challengers, or rather Team Liquid First, got their pep talk coming into this one because they're gonna need it going up against the Big Brother team. With that said, Pick a Band is ready, so I'm gonna pass it over to you, Desrix, and beat down to get into game number one. All right, farewell, my bald friend. As we get ready, you're gonna forms. do it every time. <laughs> I gotta do it to him every time, man. I gotta do it to him every time. Um, for this, I, I, I do want to focus a little bit more on the top side, kind of isolated, less in the team context, because I feel like this is gonna be a big moment for Surdy to really try and prove himself against yeah. someone who has been touted as the best top laner currently in Semi Pro and Bradley. Right. I mean, we look at this top side of the map for TL first, and there's so much we could say about a lot of these players. Again, Surdy trying to not just be a good player, a good teammate, I think is a big thing. And it's worth noting, too, talking to Cubby, getting a couple insights for TL, uh, Team Liquid when he was part of the tryouts, is that City Witty is actually a jungler that they were really excited to work with, who they wanted to be with. So they saw potential in him as well, and it's really exciting to see how he's going to develop. I mean, Aspect cool to see him back at this level as well. Mia's really exciting because, I mean, five times... We talk about T1, Tyler won, and how he hit Challenger in five rolls. Well, Mia did the same thing. And, I mean, that's kind of insane. It, it, it is. On five rolls and then finally settling for the Marksman roll. Yeah. Um, the thing is, we, we just haven't seen that success fully shine out from this bottom lane. Yet. We know the potential's there. Mia, high mechanical ceiling, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, as we do get into this draft and start looking through some of the bands, of course, TLC have done their homework because their homework happens under their own home, banning away the Karthus, not going to let that onto the table. Uh, other things that City Witty does play really well, there are a lot of marksman junglers that he can pull out. Of course, the Kindred is a big one. I'm not sure we're going to see that one early picked. It could be also banned if it doesn't come out in the second, or in the first rotation, excuse me. And I'm interested because TL very often Maokai is left up for Mir, and they take it, but this time TL get rid of it right off the bat, and he's just going to go ahead and take on the Sejuani instead. 
with that Sejuani. It, it, it does give you at least a little bit of flex here if you want to go for it, flex it around both in the jungle and topside. It's true. Uh, some other teams have done it in previous games on this season. See what the response is for TL first. I, I kind of wonder how the pep talk does go, though, Beat, as the lock-in is going to be for Yara, because, like, do, do you... Do, do, do you have to have the pep talk at the Alienware facility and then immediately go to Discord call and pep talk your other team as well? Uh, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> like, although I'm sure Spawn is involved in some capacity, Argentum Sky is the one who is coaching TL yeah. first. So there, I'm sure a lot of that is done separately, especially with respect to this particular mashup. So I'm sure the pep talk was there and everything along those lines, Eric. And at this point, it's just about doing the best you can because realistically, winning the split Placing well, that's all well and good, but we gotta remind everybody what this league is about. The reason the format changed to what it is in the first place, to let provisional teams play up against challenger teams, is for development. Giving the best play time, the best practice possible, so these players can grow, develop, and then go over to play in tier one. Okay, I got a little hyped up for a second. APA was teasing the Aurelian Soul, one of his old classic pocket picks. But I can still stay hyped up because another pocket pick was locked in. Something that's still staying a little bit more prominent in the meta, but it's an arrow special, and that is the Draven. Yeah, and I actually like the response here. So it's not going to be Ash support for Rovex. It's looking like they're thinking about Ash AD carry, and I like the Braum already so far just because of what's going on here, but it's something I think Ooh. instead, it is going to be City Witty's uh, jungle pick there in the Kindred. And that makes sense too, because I think that one is something that's going to get banned during that second rotation. So just locking that in now, I think is going to be important. But for the rest of TL's draft, you can skirmish pretty well on a pick like this, but I think you also need a mid for Aspect who's going to be able to do a bit of fighting as well, because uh, whatever Mir picks, if it, or it probably is going to be the Sejuani, we're going to see a lot of aggressive plays come through. So the last time the Kindred was played was against Dignitas. Didn't pick up a dub there, but it had a decent performance, all things considered. Uh, I'm going to be excited for it, City Witty being on this uh, more carry-oriented role. Uh, with the Kindred. And what you can provide with the Ash being paired alongside that means you have some pick potential. More importantly, you can scout out the enemy jungler with these Hawk shots to always have the heads up for City Witty. For sure. And now we're seeing the mid bands come through on both sides, realistically. I really like the Galio call there too from challenge, uh, TL Challengers to take that one away. And it's just limiting the pool here because you already know a lot of early game skirmishing is going to come through and TL first want to get the best matchups they can, especially in that mid lane because that's going to be a big part of whether it's Aspect or APA who's going to be getting out of lane to move with their jungler and help influence the map. I'm, I'm more worried about the bottom lane. Arrows on Draven. If Draven gets a kill, that is Snowball City. You know how those stacks do work. You get more gold, the more you're able to catch your axes. So if you have to deal with that, I mean, Mia has been going against a lot of this semi-pro talent. You're going against one of the most experienced players and best Draven players in Arrow. That's right. So a lot of pressure there in this particular matchup. We still aren't sure where the Ash is going to go. The Braum does get taken away. Would have been a good answer, all things considered. So there'll be other support picks or technically AD carry picks for Mia as we see. I think more than likely, it's going to be decided here on four because you've already picked your top laner lined and you have your matchup set. Now it's just going to be getting Aspect the best matchup you can mid lane. All right, so we are getting the front line established. Something TL first was lacking a lot of. They did front load a lot of that damage and uh, pick potential Kindred, Fiora, Ash. Nautilus, still good, um, does provide a lot of backup in follow-up CC is what I've always liked about Nautilus, specifically with the hook. Uh, would set up champions such as Ari, for example, in the mid lane. Makes charms very easy, but for TLC, no mercy, no prisoners. This gets locked in, yeah, we're going aggro in the bottom lane. Arrow and Kim Down have thrown down with Draven Renata. Yeah, I like that pickup because you have I mean, you have a lot of skirmishing power with this pick. You're going to get push and pressure on this bottom side. And all that's left to me, especially because you already have a front line, is what's APA running in the mid lane? A lot of mids still up and available. Uh, a lot of bids were also taken out of the picture. But okay, it's going to be a right. Talia. We've already seen a couple games of it from him last week with some pretty good performances. And now it's what he's comfortable taking blind with what's left. We could see Aspect. I mean, there are a lot of different options still available. Ari's up. Ori, I think, is a good pick. Swain, 
I wouldn't expect, but it's something Aspect I think could go for because TL challengers have a good amount of all in and Swing kind of likes that. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Lissandra good. Okay, okay. I, I, I do like the Lissandra pick coming out for Aspect. It, it kind of facilitates a lot of the other lanes when it comes to the fights. Um, being able to get that crowd control locked down, if you can lock it onto the Talia, the Draven, uh, everyone else can follow up very, very easily. And the crowd control really piled in by TL first is going to be a great thing uh, if they can actuate these picks, especially around neutral objectives, uh, dragon fights, and so on. Uh, I do like Aspect taking the utility route when you already have so much damage for TL first. Agree. And the thing I, I'm looking for and why I like that this pick came through to round it out is when you see a Fiora, like you can kind of team fight, but we know it's about split push. More often yeah. than not, we're going to see the hull breaker and things like that come through. So I look at the rest of the core outside of Fiora to see how well TL first can skirmish, can go for these objectives and things like that while someone is answering Fiora. And I think it's good overall, especially because you have a lot of CC lockdown, a good amount of damage. And for the few times we've seen TL pick up wit, TLF pick up wins, you can play for Surdy on one of his best picks. All right, game number one of the Team Liquid Honda Civil War now underway, challengers versus first. I had uh, some conversations with CLG before. Uh, week number one, they had their Civil War as well. Uh, one of the things they were saying was it was great to get it out <laughs> of the way from the get-go. True. Because now you don't have to worry about, like, scrim results or leaking any information. It, you just have it done. Yeah, I mean, fair. Single round Robin. So, of course, this matchup will not happen again unless they cross paths in playoffs. So, it's week three. Not quite as early as CLG got it done, but it's a similar idea. They'll be able to work with each other a little more easily after today is done. And, I mean, we talked about TLF's comp. Looking at what TLC want to do on the blue side here yeah. is that, I mean, you have this bot lane. That's going to be a nightmare. For Mia and Rovex, if they aren't careful, you're going to be under a lot of pressure, which is why we're seeing Mir start top, and it's very likely going to pass straight to bottom after a three camp of some varying order. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And APA post six is also going to be looking to play to side. I imagine it's also going to be that bot side when he has the Weaver's Wall. And Surdy doing a kind of pseudo invade just to get the information on where Mir was starting out. Uh, spots out that it's going to be that blue buff. Uh, good information to have because it means that you don't have to deal with the stress of Mir pathing up towards the end. You know he's still going to be clearing bot side uh, unless he doubles back. And I, I do like attention being towards this top side just because of the legacy that we have. Both of these top laners. I mean, even though Surdy has been trying to prove himself, I think Bradley has had moments of slipping up here and there. Take you back to that uh, first week where Bradley went against Faisal, got solo killed. Has been solo killed a few times by some of our talent here. Bradley is touted highly, not just because of the hands checks and stuff, but as as the total package. It's not anything to really scuff onto Bradley, but uh, it's something for Surdy to really play to. I think last year was definitely a good one of a lot of development for Bradley in his first year in after the roll swap. But there's definitely still, despite his highs, some work to be done. And again, that's the yeah. beauty of this league, development. And that's something we could very well see as time goes on. Bradley's still definitely one of the better tops we have. So we'll see, even though Surdy at the moment is getting the better in this early matchup. And that was that early scouting by Surdy. Can still play this aggressive and punish Bradley knowing that you know, Mir is nowhere in this location. We do take a look at what Twitch chat has to say about this matchup. I'm glad we have some faith for Team Liquid first. Two percent for viewers going that route on the vote. Yeah, I like it. It's more than I was expecting. We're going to see Mir do a little bit of invading as well here. Potentially a dive, but more than likely not. The dive instead is going to be top. Surdy stacked a huge wave and there is an angle. Yeah, the double back coming out from City Witty, and it's going to be first blood picked up on this top side. Great start for Team Liquid first. Just doesn't get any simpler than that, Eric. I like it that Bradley doesn't even bother with the flash. He knows too much trading of health early on. Whoa. An exchange in the bottom lane. Rovex gets a hook in, but you can tell that Team Liquid's first bot lane, they're not itching to engage too quickly into a Draven. No, I mean, you can already see Mia struggling by nature of the matchup here. The CS lead is growing. 
in favor of Arrow, and that's how it goes, because it only gets worse if you give away that kill, so they're paying their respects, making sure that they don't trade too aggressively, because at the moment, nobody really knows where Mir is right now. You could probably guess he's topside, but if you trade your health too inefficiently, well, then you might be susceptible to a dive, and that's something they don't want to happen. Where in the world is Mir? City Witty will get some information right here, seeing that Scuttle Crab... Uh, knows that Mir is at least somewhere in this top quadrant. The ping's already coming out for uh, Surti, uh, giving some potential warning over there, but decent scouting by City Witty. Still good pathing for Mir. Um, getting a good amount of farm on top of that regard as uh, Mir's going to finish up clearing up this top side. Right, and TLC not wanting to really force anything just yet we're getting to the point where level sixes are starting to come online for the solo laners and i think that's where things are really going to pick up apa and he has that weaver's wall he can help set up a dive on that bottom side i think when he gets that level up on the next wave you got to imagine that will be in the cards for tlc is it just a bully bot lane angle is this what team liquid c uh really go for here yeah. You shove in the wave, right? Not much of an issue against Lissandra. Gank the bottom lane. Depth charge is the biggest worry that you have there, but... They won't be six in time. That's yeah. the thing. And, and once APA is six, like, this is the play that you want to be going for, realistically, because you have this bot lane Draven for Arrow who you want to be snowballing. And Bradley, I mean, for the most part, even though he's getting chunked out, losing out a bit in the CS war, he's just chilling on the top side, and, that, and that's not really the lane you want to be playing for here. Still looking at where our junglers are routing. City Witty has called Aspect over. We're looking top side, and Bradley realizes something smells foul here. Spots out the Kindred, City Witty with the attack onto Bradley, but with Aspect nowhere nearby, Bradley's going to be okay, but pretty good zoning coming out for TLF, getting a strong lead for Surti. Yeah, it's big, and you're starting to see this really start to grow. I Surti has twice Bradley CS right now, and he has to sack even more. Big on him, though, for respecting the fact that Aspect was out of lane, that City could be in the area. So he ends up not really giving up more than he needs to. And the problem, though, on the other side of the map, bot lane is doing a lot of damage onto these turret plays because they know City's still here. Bradley's... Just like, leave me alone, man. Just let me, let me 1v1. Oh, oh the level? City will get the oh. kill. But it results in a trade. He's giving his life for it. Bradley got some gold back. I think overall, that's not that bad. Like, you still force the dive. You still get the kill onto Bradley, who doesn't have teleport. He's still losing out on more and more gold and XP. And he's struggling right now. He's down two levels. Look at the CS difference coming through here. And even though... And that translates to even more on this bottom side. Pressure on Tamiya, Dragon number one, and APA still holding on to this ultimate. We'll be in a good position to make a play soon. Yeah, a really defined plan of attack coming out for Team Liquid first. Just focus this top side. Get Surdy going, get that side lane control very firmly in the hands of Team Liquid first. And of course, get City Witty some kills on this Kindred. Yeah, the game plan has been solid so far. We're seeing it again. Everything that's culminated early on, zoning Bradley from XP gives that level advantage. He doesn't have the Dominus, otherwise this play wouldn't be possible. So of course it's easy for Surdy to make this one happen, and Bradley, despite his best efforts, isn't able to live long enough. He trades flashes with City, but I think ultimately you're still net positive as TLF. For TLF, early game's going okay. They're mostly finding it from the top side, but eventually they're going to have to answer this bottom lane. It's a Draven, after maybe. all. Maybe? I say maybe, because look at what Mia's building. Even though she is, oh. you know, the AD carry, she's doing the support build. Yeah. And, and just because it's cheap, you know you're going to be in a lot of problems, but we're going to talk about that later, because there's a fight about to happen. Oh, Hook comes out from Robex, lands on a Kim down, but the hostile takeover and seismic shove combo does a lot of work. Is it enough? Bradley has arrived. Big Bradley's here to bring the hurt. On to Rovex, the Gator tearing away. We'll get Rovex critically low. One more auto could finish the job, and APA will be the one to deal it. Surdy gets a double kill, though. Two versus two. Surdy hops forward, wants to take out Bradley. Bradley hanging on. Oh, they got him. Gets dropped by Aspect. APA forced to flash away, but Surdy wants more 
sidesteps a lot of the rocks coming in. Can't challenge through. Oh, wait a minute. APA turning this around after Aspect. Surdy slides oh. on in and takes down the collegiate mid laner. And everything's going in favor of TLF. Yeah, the bot lane has been getting no attention, but you can tell this was planned from the start. Mia going for a very supportive build, a very economical build, recognizes that she's not getting very much attention. And we're seeing this play come through here. Again, the level advantage of Rovex versus Kim Down is the big thing here. No ultimate, no depth charge means so much value comes through from that hostile takeover. But City saves the day with the Lamb's Respite and is able to help do so much damage with the time bot. Even though he goes down in the process, damage is done. And with Arrow not able to cash in with that Whirling Death, I mean, you're fine with this as TLF. Yeah, Surdy cashing in so much off of this fight. I mean, even this final kill against APA, that experience of Surdy uh, really showing out here. Utilizing that Fog of War to bait APA just that much closer. And what do you know, Beatdown? It, it, it's going to be Team Liquid first. Getting a lead 10 minutes into this game. And all this that they put into the side lane is starting to pay off here. Into Surdy. He's 3-0. and Already has that Divine Sunderer. You back off because you don't have the Lamb's Respite. You don't have the Ash Arrow from across the map. So you give up the Rift Herald. And this is that opportunity for Team Liquid Challengers to be able to maybe get something back here on the map. If they can successfully dive, I mean, it's probably not gonna be Surdy. You just give that one up. I think it's a bot lane dive that they're gonna be going for here. And oh my days, look at the top lane gold difference. 10 minutes, 10 minutes and it's 2K. That is absolutely nutty. And Surdy. look at what Mia's lost, 600 gold. I mean, that's worth, I'm, I'm not a math right. major, but that's worth. Right. Absolutely right there. Keep in mind, Arrow still has it banked. Stacks, if Arrow gets That's a true. kill, will change things up quite a bit here. I, I, I would like what to see Mir try and get a cash in quite soon onto this bottom lane, uh, especially if you can get a roam out from APA and shove in the mid, get Pryo over there. Transfer everything to get Arrow to cash in, man. That opportunity for APA hasn't really come through yet. You gotta imagine that's still something they're gonna be looking for. Remember, Mir has the Rift Herald. Bot lane, I mean, realistically, is the best place for this. It's TLF all in top. You all in bot and may the best carry win. Such an interesting take by Mia to just go full support route. They're playing it makes heavily sense. towards their carries though. And the carries don't exist on the bottom side. You're right, it does make a lot of sense when City and Surdy are just taking all this econ. Yeah, we've seen Ash uh, eight in the 80 carry role go for these similar supportive builds as well. Yesterday, it was done by Lens for Wildcard in the, I mean, that incredible upset versus Cloud9 Challengers. And it's just been something I think we're going to see more come through here as Bradley. Uh, oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah, here we go once again. A gank onto Bradley. The point of attack for TL oh, no. first. Mia under oh, attack as she well. Lives. Gets away from the ultimate. Same thing might be true for Bradley, but TLF will not make that the case. Taking down Bradley, getting more kills up there, and the Econ keeps swinging the way of TLF. Yeah, Bradley, that's the best he could do, SRX. Cleared the wave, got almost all of the next wave, and I mean, he was gonna die regardless. So, Bradley being tossed in the blender by Team Liquid first, and all things considered, gold leads in various spots of the map. TLF come out ahead in aggregate, and the only difference is that bot lane pressure, or rather the lack of pressure from TLF, means more dragons continue to go over to TLC. And that's something that Team Liquid First are going to have to deal with soon because Infernal Soul is a big win con, especially if Arrow starts to cash in. They can't let that one go through. Kraken Slayer just completed. No, sold it. Uh, not sold it, reverted it to a Gale Force. So Arrow will now have that done, double longswords on top of it. This is going to be a big cash in for Surdy because this was uh, second brick going down. So many plates, solo. I want to see this recall right now. I know, I'm wondering too. Okay, tier two boots. Still plated? See, come on, come on, come on. Okay, Tiamat, Tiamat well, so yep. more side lane control. Yeah, I mean, Ravenous Hydra, it, like, it's just the go-to for Fiora, especially with that Divine Sunderer. Your sustain, like, no one can 1v1 Surdy. It, it is simply not possible. Even 2v1s at this point, 
might be out of the question. So this is what TLF wanted. Surdy is now a side lane monstrosity and an insane commitment to actually try and stop that you either commit several members to his side of the map or you try and take more faster elsewhere. So far, the latter has been what Team Liquid Challengers have been going for to some middling success. Realistically, TLF, again, they're getting all that they want. Oh, actually, City oh. might win this. Bradley caught out in rotation and City has Oh, the arrow! He flashes into the arrow! The arrow from Mia flashed into another pick for TLF. And that's what this is great because the gold is going to the actual care. Oh, wait a minute. Ooh, a big slip big up cancel. for Aspect. APA, Seismic Shove cancels out the teleport. TLF can't make the play like they wanted to. Doesn't matter. They still got a net positive in the grand scheme of things. Bot lane tower Bot. goes down and it's Surdy yep. who's cashing it. Who's going to deal with him? No Bradley, and Bradley is far behind to begin with. That tier 2 turret is also going down, but that's why they're focusing on the mid lane. Mia and Rovex are in trouble. Here we go, Mir. Oh, ultimate doesn't land. Rovex still alive. Hostile takeover goes off, pulls Rovex right back in. But here comes City. Lamps respite saves Rovex. But do they got enough damage to follow through on the back end of the fight? Answer is going to be no because. Oh, Errol that's the cash in. Cashed in on Draven. Oh my god. I, I wasn't sure if I saw that number correctly. Was it like 900 30. something gold? Oh no, yeah. I mean. That, that's the big play you're looking for as DLC. And that's the use of the Weaver's Wall. Everything to get Arrow the cash in. So now, I imagine a big back is going to come through. And oh man, I thought he was going to have to cleanse that one. But that's an answer back for Team Liquid Challengers. All right, items, items, items. Let's bring it back up again. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, before he purchases. Okay, Essence Weaver. Oh, yep. Woo wee. That was a I think he had a cash. long sword before that, so that is uh, that was a big perch. Two long swords. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay, now you're seeing the lead start to culminate a little bit more. It's more than two thousand gold. What was that three hundred earlier on? Uh five five hundred something along those lines. So it spiked quite a bit because of the turret gold, because of the cash in, obviously, and things like that. And again, it's just it's the tale of two carries from Surdy and Arrow. Both of these teams playing for opposite sides of the map. And for the moment, Surdy. It seems like he's in a position to give us the Moose Hater special from yesterday as we take a replay of... I mean, it was the big ass arrow. That's what I'm looking you at. The These first angle. few seconds of the fight. Oh, the yeah, fancy it's angle. the fancy angle. Blink, hop, boom, got him. Easy. I love our observers. <laughs> Me too, man. Nice and clean, nice and easy, as I think we're going to continue this replay to see the mid play. And again, it's that call. You clear up vision, the top side, and you just wait for the opportunity. You zone aspect off the top turret. You know Fiora is in the side lane. So you have a lot of power and opportunity to make this play happen. And Arrow gets the cash in. Let's see if we can see the gold. Oh, oh nope, nope. We got to oh, see the fight. Goodbye, Bradley. Wait, is that 30 1v1ing Big Bradley? Yes, sir. That is 30 4 0 4 now. And Team Liquid Challengers have no top laner right now beat down. Surdy has taken over. I mean, with all the work Team Liquid have done in this early game, DLC don't have a top laner. Like, it's so brutal. Bradley is one in six. All the attention from the mid and jungle moving to this top side. This, realistically, Surdy actually is going to be knocking on the base's door. We're 18 minutes in the game. Like, this split push is unbelievable. And Eric, I know what you want to say. Hit me. 900 it, it was well over 900 gold i didn't get the back numbers but that cash 980 the something like, 900. it was almost a thousand gold yeah that's a big big cash in for arrow and team thick. liquid uh, they're closing the bleeding that they've had very smart right now because they've gotten a dragon uh lead two dragons coming out late game wind condition still grabbing turrets as well so despite everything only 2k behind and the big thing now that we were talking about earlier, Team Liquid, now they're in a position where they don't want to let this dragon go through because fighting for soul, going for that flip is dangerous. That's why you see the teleports from both solo laners. TLF are all inning on this dragon. They have some vision in their favor, but they are mostly walking into the dark. Oh, they are going to spot out Aspect and Sturdy right there with that scry. Team Liquid challengers... They're playing this carefully. We'll rotate back to the mid lane, not looking to contest this team fight from Team Liquid first. Pick is there. Mia, all by your lonesome, waiting for that enchanted crystal arrow, but 
Team Liquid Challengers, they realize they're not in the position to outright take the dragon fight, but they're still in a good spot to get some gold. We'll take the mid lane tower. And not just gold. It's, it allows you to dock for position on the map, for vision on the map. And that works out really well because realistically, the dragon fight, too dangerous. That's the luxury you earned yourself by getting those two early drakes for all that bot lane control. But now, Baron is up in 40 seconds. Now, Surdy is two items and a stopwatch deep. Like, realistically, if Bra Bradley will die under tower at this point <laughs> if he isn't careful. But we're still too early in the game for something like we saw from Moose Hater yesterday, Eric, where he was able to end the game on Fiora with an insane split push there to be Cloud9 in the first game. But this is what it's building to for TLF. And I don't think Team Liquid Challengers actually have a way to respond to that as time goes on. Usually when we see TLC, even in an unfavorable map stake, I think they make a lot of very intelligent decisions to try and get the map stay back in their favor, pushing out the right lanes, clearing out vision as best that they can. Even in their losses, it looks quite good. So how are they going to be able to do that in this one is what I'm interested in because Surdy is... I, I just, it just seems impossible to deal with to me. This would be such a morale boost for Team Liquid First to take this win right now. Go look at a lot of our provisional teams. Doing fantastic. Wildcard, Cincinnati Fear. Great stuff to see, right? But the problem comes our affiliated provisional teams are the ones that are floundering. Team Liquid First, CLG Faith, FlyFam, all at the bottom of the uh, ladder right now. Still trying to climb back up. I mean, beating one of the most contested teams, that uh, a team that a lot of people see in the top five quite easily. You know, that is a morale boost. That is a momentum boost that can ride out quite happily in. So far, this side lane control and side lane push that they've been doing has been setting them up well. But here we go. Engage coming out. Mia, forced to flash away. Hostile takeover goes off. Able to get it onto Rovex, but a great buffer with the hook. All right, so it does cost you your flash and heal as Mia. I think that's the biggest thing here. Another all-in like that will take her out of the picture. But overall, yeah, you, you walk away with your lives. But slowly, Team Liquid have been narrowing that gold lead as he highlighted Eric. And Mia has the arrow. Oh, arrow comes out. Bradley on the flank. City Witty spots it, chooses to back off. APA there, looking for a seismic shove on the city. City flashing out of the seismic shove. But you can see how dangerous Team Liquid Challengers are. Yeah. One little misstep from TLF and already pouncing is TLC. At the drop of a hat, they will find that angle. You'll find that break in your armor to get themselves back into this game. And we're looking at Mir. We'll get spotted out by the Hawkshot. Realistically, this is just TLF's opportunity to clear vision. They're resetting on TLC's side. You want to push in this top wave a bit so you can potentially go for that next dragon and hopefully take out this mid turret. But APA's here, and he's not going to let that happen easily. Recalls coming out for TLF. Ooh, stopping some recalls on top of that. Team Liquid Challengers, with this recall, with this reset of TLF, they will get some priority over towards the Baron area. And they're going to use that to get the Deep Vision running into their favor. Now, you don't want to fight into the Fog of War against so much pick. Mir, standing forward, being that wall, that frontliner, daring TLF to do a little something more. But that's all that's needed for TLC. They want control over the Baron. They're not going to contest the side lanes just yet. Just need to make sure that TLF aren't trying to sneak something. Right, like TLF, Surdy constantly on the split being unchallenged makes the most sense. You have a time before he's able to actually get to the base, and I like that they delay the answer. Instead, they want the 5v4 Baron. Surdy has teleport. He can join, but will he? Arrow down. Mia going wide with it. 4k health remains. Surdy still staying inside of the base. Rovex pushed in. Seismic shove. Out comes Hostile takeover. It does work, and that's two kills going over to Arrow. Just like that. Surdy working away over in the bottom lane will be able to grab that inhibitor, so it's not going to be empty-handed for Team Liquid first. Oh, he's going to keep Liquid going! Challengers, they're still looking at this Baron, and Surdy is looking at the base, challenging it out with APA. APA looking to skirmish, still bringing the rocks in, fighting it over at the Baron, over the wall, City Witty will go, Lambs Respite buying some time, will get the heal, but Arrow cashes in another kill, and will fell Surdy in the bottom lane. It's oh, Bradley's down. Winning out, Surdy drops. Mia? Mia? Out. 
Mia, not even taking a marksman build, will brutalize for a quadra kill in the name of Team Liquid first. Oh my god, Team Liquid first. 30 almost ends the game, but overall, TLF managed to stall the Baron and pick up so much kill gold, and they hold on to fight another day. And it means that this dragon is now on the table here, as this bot lane is something people need to clear up now on TLC's end. It's still just APA. Mir is now back on the map, but you can see it. This is TLF's dragon. That's going to be two infernals in their favor and they are still holding on. Oh my goodness, I there, there was so much going on at once, B, that I was jumping back and forth between the picture and picture and actual screen. Yeah, and the big thing here was that APA made the right call. He just, I think he walked back instead of going for the recall as Surdy tried to end it, and he played it wonderfully. Managed to get the shutdown, taking him out of the picture, but the big thing here, the fight happened. Baron does a lot of damage. So Mia walking in and out, tossing out the volleys, helping the Baron get those finishing kills, and then managed to pick up a quadra kill. With a support Ash build. I just want to keep that. Yeah. There. How great is that? Oh, that is amazing. Mia, take a look at the gold now starting to uh, still very, very behind. I was going to say. The nature <laughs> with Draven, but starting to close that out. You don't really need that much income when you've taken the support build. Right. And again, like, the difference is a lot. Arrow does a lot more damage, but the utility build that Mia is going for means this gold deficit isn't as bad as it seems. You have a lot of ability haste. That Enchanted Crystal Arrow is on a ridiculous cooldown already, level 11. Like, it's got to be 30, 40 seconds or something like that. And a lot of your damage is still going to be City, Aspect, and of course, Surdy, who is still monstrously ahead. I will say... The only real downside is that you take the inhibitor as 30, you're not able to knock down any Nexus turrets, and look what's happening on the minimap there. You have that constant push. TLF aren't in a position to actually end the game, so that's a lane they can't farm, and more importantly, that's a lot of extra gold and XP to Bradley, who desperately needs it. Ooh, a nice buffer on the hook coming out from Rovex, but Rovex is still caught out. City Witty on the flank, looking for damage. Death Charge lands on the mirror. City Witty will dodge out, and no one gonna go down. Exchange of skills, Serdi, back to the bot lane for side control. Yeah, just doing what little farming you can in this situation here, and I... Uh, okay, I thought he was gonna... I thought he was gonna stay. Oh, he is. So I'm wondering, Serdi could go for the 1v1 here, but TLF, right now, wants to try and threaten this mid-tier one. It's been yeah. up the whole game. They need there's, this turret down. There's no ultimate for Mirror, so TLF... They have a right to be here. They can disrespect the living oh, daylight. Oh, wait. Yeah, he DLC, can just do Surdy. this. Surdy's just brutalizing that tower. First Nexus tower down. Step number one for TLF. Three members now aggressing onto Surdy. It's Baron Surdy. time. Oh, Perry's out. Now looking to hop. Gets over the wall. Get it's the Baron. A great escape coming out for Surdy. And Baron has been started for TLF. The rest of TLC chasing down on the Surdy. They realize, oh, we got a situation over at the Baron pit. We can't chase this man no more. Yeah, the Baron play doesn't end up working out, but City, or Surdy, excuse me, makes that great escape. And you can see TLF using this advantage he has so well. Because now, I mean, the first Nexus turret is down. One or two moves like that. And game one is over, Deserax. Surdy can win this game. You gotta be kidding me, man. Surdy in the Civil War. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to the audience right now. This was one we looked at with not much regard. We were just like, this is gonna be TLF getting stomped in two games. It's been a rough season for them, but uh, the way it is, no. No, 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 no. Surdy has shown up to play, has been fighting in this side lane has been keeping TLC, you know, uh, afraid of pulling any trigger because their base is always going to be at risk. Surdy yeah. has done a great job of bringing TLF back. Right, and I mean, this is the game plan that TLF have, and it's working, all things considered. Gold-wise, you're not up a whole lot, but the skew of where that gold is is making a monumental difference in this game. And again, I say, I stress this, TLF, Surdy, if he makes another play like that, he can end this game. So TLC have to be very careful about their base and how all of these things play out. Because, I mean, if you don't have a teleport handy, if you're in a spot where TLF can interrupt your recalls, then uh, <laughs> that's it. TLF will win their third game.
That being said, good targeting can be clutch for TLC right here. Seismic yep. shove, beautiful move to have, but Arrow, one crit from Arrow's axe does a lot in a team fight. Mir we'll see. Rovix gets caught out by the ultimate over the wall. Bradley will continue the chase. Already one pick found. TLF now in complete retreat. Their Silaners far from helping out this situation. A double kill already tlc have picked up two and they look over the wall there's a big purple worm ready for the taking and that's the slip up here they're gonna try from tlf to salvage to see if they can stop this but this is gonna be very difficult oh okay secure through still looking for more but you can't take this it's only a lissandra it's only an ash and it's barren for tlc wow i mean that was a big risk i mean realistically Waves are pushed in a spot where TLC, they're going to take some time before they get to any structures they can take down. But TLF, not afraid to make the big plays. Not afraid to make those risky calls. And it seems like for the most part, it's been paying off this game. But now, this is where TLC ends are back. And this is what I mean when I say slip up. This is not a position you can be in. Your side laner is clearly showing on the map and everyone else is in fog. You can't approach this mid wave. You just can't. And they punish that beautifully on the side of Team Liquid Challengers, meaning that they're able to just absolutely decimate this fight, get themselves a Baron, and you can see it in the picture-in-picture. Picture, that's their Infernal Soul point. Something else I see in that picture-in-picture picture is another tower taken by Surdy. So still being that side lane menace, putting all that pressure in, thing is, like, you need him if you are going to fight. There, there was not much of a chance of this being reality. No, and I, I, I like the I like the confidence you try and go for this play. If you somehow steal that Baron, so I actually think Siri might be able to end the game, if not get very, very close to it. So there's a clear idea in mind. They try, it doesn't work out. But now the question is, yep, you have Surdy. To be fair, T uh, APA is level 18, and he is four items deep, eight stacks on the Megis. So he's very strong. He's scary right there. Zerdy playing a bit of Metal Gear. We'll be able to get that recall, so... Safe. He stands. City Witty going deeper onto the bottom end of the map. Team Liquid Challenger is focusing onto this top end. They do have a wave to follow through. Uh, and it's going to force the response out of TLF. Right, I mean, Zerdy has to continue splitting. You know this inhibitor is forfeit. Oh, Mia. Oh, Mia. Nice sidestep. It's going to be enough to keep her alive. Allows Surdy to continue with the split push, but at the cost of an inhibitor going down, Team Liquid Challengers securing that. City Witty still in the mid lane. Oh, yip, yip, here we go. Appa showing up in the mid. Wants to go after City Witty, but it's enough to at least protect Bradley. Yeah, it's for the defense of your teammate is the big thing. We take another look at Surdy and see the spot wave is that constant source of pressure. And that's probably where Surdy will be spending a lot of time because again, this is the nature of Fiora. You're playing for the split push. Top side with the inhibitor down on TLF side means that top wave is constantly pushing and is probably going to be Aspect's job for the time being. Overall, TLC again, slowing down, minimizing yeah. what Team Liquid first are trying to do, punishing those small mistakes, allowing them to maintain control because realistically, even though Surdy's two items up, because of how far behind the rest of the team have fallen, that core four we were talking about in draft can't function very well without him now. And that's something, a situation Let's, you're really afraid to be in. Okay. Our, this is spicy coming out from TLF. They're just rushing into the base. They stopped one of the recalls with an Ash Arrow. So Inhibitor is going to go down. Bradley will stay in that bottom lane to uh, continue the side lane push here. But TLF, right now, some of the plays they're making... A little bit on the desperate side of things, but it did work out. Yeah, you will be able to also clean out the jungle a little bit, get vision. So it's not without its benefits here, but you're just trying to create the best situation for Surdy to try and do what we've been seeing him do constantly. Break in the base, go for the back door. And unfortunately, that's the only real option TLF have. I think it's the only option they really had based on how they were playing out this early game. All that attention to Surdy on the top side, the supportive build that we're seeing from Mia, and the gold difference that is still unreal in this top side. But if you look elsewhere, Arrow, I know I said Mia is going the supportive build, so it's not as bad that she's just behind, but 7K is a lot, no matter how you slice it, Desirex. It certainly is. Surdy 
Still trying to uh, play hero to this game. It's just, uh, it, it's been hard because TLC are forcing TLF to play to their game. Or TLF, they want to get people into the side lanes and they want to split apart Team Liquid Challengers. They're just not allowed it whatsoever because of the pressure that TLC are able to apply on the map at any given moment. This might be a backdoor play attempted out from Team Liquid first, sending two members down into this bottom lane. I think it's more of a vision game because Dragon Soul is coming up in a minute's time for TLC. Right, yeah. You can't let that one go. You need some kind of vision on the bottom side of the map so you can get that better setup and play for this objective. That third dragon, not only will you get a lot of stats because you are stacking three infernal dragons individually, but you buy yourself time, which is what TLF need because we talk about the slip-ups they're making. If TLC make a slip-up, they let 30 in the base. Well, that's another GG possibility here for both these teams. A lot of this pick has to land flush onto APA, onto Arrow, and even if you do, Cleanse is there. Available for both. You still have that spell book by APA, so flexing around a lot with these summoners. Team Liquid Challengers control into the river right now. They're going to send Bradley on this top side to deal with the split push that keeps coming out from Team Liquid first. Leave this base open for too long. They will just oh my god and take it, and that's what they're doing. They're going right after they are the committing inhibitor. teleport coming in. The rest of Team Liquid first are going to be on a mission to stop these recalls coming through, and they're not able to do enough. City Witty's too low right here. Still chasing out the rest of TLC. TLF, another inhibitor drop teleport now coming out, looking to make the play on the flank. Here comes Surdy. Can't follow through. Mir, Kim down, Arrow all over that wall, but you only have Rovex on the Look back at the of damage. Might have made a big mistake right here. Can't contest with Mir. We'll put on the oh challenge my. onto Mir. Sidesteps the ultimate. The axe goes through, but Sardi stays alive. Can you do much else? Goes Golden doing everything he can to buy time, but shut down and rocked by APA. And the gamble fails. Deserex TLC have the Dragon Soul and Yak. A city might be able to get that kill on the Kim down. It's secured, but still, your base is under threat now. You have this bottom inhibitor to worry about. The only saving grace is you got mid and top inhibitor. It will allow you to buy yourself some time. And we're going to see the different perspective of what just took place. You see the teleport from Aspect, the back being stopped by the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. And they don't even care about stealing this Drake, Eric. It's just trying to stop these recalls you're seeing ultimates everything used up here and i thought arrows back got stopped but instead he actually just stopped it on his own to pick up another kill which i mean did end up forcing surdy's teleport so worth surdy coming up empty-handed the back end of that play is a it, it's a big shame for tlf because they have so many huh? of their chips on surdy's play oh Teleport over towards that top side for Bradley. Uh, for Team Liquid Challengers, at the moment, it's just about controlling their lanes and making sure these wave states don't get out of hand. Because if they could do that for a little bit longer, buy time for the inhibitors to come back up, they got a good 5v5 around these neutrals and already trying to square that up around the Baron. But look at TLF beat their menaces. Dude, dude like the two inhibitors are down. At this point, it's just the mad dash for the base. Okay, Mia caught out. Hostile takeover will be pulled right back. Surdy joining the fight, going after Arrow. Looking to take down Arrow. Payback will not be enough. Lancer Spy buys a little bit more time. Here comes Bradley into the fight. Surdy still full health, chasing onto Arrow. Wants to kill Arrow. Arrow will survive, and Surdy will not. Now Bradley is here. Big Bradley going after City Witty. It doesn't matter what you bring to the fight because Team Liquid Challengers have brought more, and they'll take four. Man, what a banger game, Eric. We're coming up on 40 minutes here, and Team Liquid First, who we thought didn't have a chance in this game, is taking this game down to the wire. More of their, more of TLC's base is broken into than TLF's, and they still have supers pushing in the top side, but that's about to change, Eric, as TLC taking advantage of very long spawn timers to break into the base with arrow damage. They could push for the end. Almost 40 minutes this game has been. First spawn timer coming up. Mia is here. Now onto the back. Aspect! Oh, aspect! 
finds the pick on the arrow. So critical it is, and Mia chases Bradley. A shutdown for Aspect. Team Liquid first are chasing the challengers away. Uh -oh. But watch out for APA Seismic Shove. It'll go on a rampage, taking down Mia. Oh my god, TLF, and both of these teams just turning it around back and forth. TLF, hold on. Aspect trades his life for Arrow, but that's Baron. what keeps them in the game. Baron is up on the table. Like you said, it's a mark for City Witty, and is that something they can go for here? No Arrow for another 20 seconds. Oh Maybe word. they can. This oh could be word. how TLF blows things out. They're going to take it down so quickly. It's getting melted. APA is late, so is Mir. Oh, 7k health remains. You gotta be fast, Mir has to make the play. Arctic Assault forward, here we go. Looking for it, Mir trying to get the steel size. Whoa! APA, beautiful setup coming out for Kim down. Cerny still staying alive, trying to get the challenge so he can find the hill. Loves your spike, doing the work. Mir falling low, payback's not gonna be- No jungler! Oh, APA! In the world, APA with the steal of the century to secure Baron. You got to imagine that's it. Team Liquid Challengers keep coming out on top and APA with the legendary steal. TLF, they throw it all at Mir. They make sure there is no smite to contend with, but they forgot about APA, the mid laner we're most excited about coming into this league. What a war between these two squads. The moment TLC fell behind, I knew they still had a chance because they did it yesterday, Beat, and they keep doing it even here today, still showing up, securing that Baron APA. Take another look at it because it is a thing of beauty. I mean, the big oh. thing here, APA flashes right in, right on time with the Whirling Death to make sure you can burst it down before the smite even comes through. Or actually, it looks like City just ended up missing out on the smite, which is even more unfortunate. Yeah. An objective TLF desperately needed to keep their hopes alive in this game. But now, Baron up for TLC. Everyone alive on both sides. And we're Elder. getting to a point where Elder is here. We, again, TLF, not a team comp that can team fight. Yes, Surdy is very strong, almost literally at full build, but that isn't enough. You need the split to work if TLF want to win. And TLC, all they need to do is have someone defend the base. Surdy wants to get past APA. Oh, so oh my god! Through brute force! Surdy takes down APA! Wait, this Bradley could be the game! To the wolf. Bradley it's dead. over! APA's dead! Hey, oh my god, else is happening right now? TLF, they're in the base, and they're looking to close this out. Three members of TLC standing for the defense. Arrow comes out, it lands on a Kim down, and Kim down They will fall. did it! Mir under attack! TLF in the Silver War! They will be the first ones to draw the blood of their own sister team, TLC, and take it big! TLF made it happen. They had the game plan, and despite the hiccups, Eric, they executed. And in one of easily the biggest upsets we've seen so far, defeating the big brother of TLC. What in the world be down? I was not I don't expecting know. that. We called a super heavyweight slap down 100, uh, SmackDown, excuse me, 100 Thieves uh, versus Cloud9. This is not the case. The Civil War. Maybe this not. is the true SmackDown. Maybe, or at the very least, we got multiple SmackDowns. We had all bangers yesterday, and why couldn't that be the same today? My word, my word. I need to catch my breath. I need to recover. Me too. Kangas, where are you at, man? We're going to throw it over a short break when we return. We'll have Kangas back for the halftime segment. We'll see you then. Oh, my word.